This week on The Pitch, our five finalists met the former SEBI chairman, Mr. Damodaran, and realized that today's task was all about their businesses and their numbers. When it comes down to the brass tacks and rupees and pesa, do their businesses actually add up? Manish Segal is a partner at KPMG and has over 13 years of experience in strategic consulting, private equity and mergers and acquisitions advisory. He has consulted for leading global companies, private equity funds and financial institutions. Here I am as your guide. Maybe I'm, I'm expecting some, some good sort of questions from your side and also uh, you know, as someone who's actually advised people, you know, in preparing some of these business plans. Uh, I think all of you are winners in some sense. I must tell you that all of you have, have great ideas. And I think uh, you, you in some way symbolize the budding entrepreneurial spirit of this country. Uh, so that's great. But what's important is that only one idea is going to win. Okay, and, and, and uh, it is one of you sitting here, as simple as that. But what's more important is you will need to clearly communicate uh, while you talk about your idea, what you really believe is the opportunity that your idea is going to address and how you believe your idea is unique. Okay. We had Manish, uh, one of our initial uh, pitch judges today, who would uh, come and help us. So uh, we were given the luxury of uh, bouncing our ideas, bouncing our uh, thoughts off Manish before uh, we went and presented to Mr. Damodaran. How do I communicate, how do I convince that, you know, this is my view. One thing is in the brief time, like the pitch, I will have, right, 10, 12 minutes. Because, uh, for example, what, like the, the, my one of the variables is the number of people who will use internet in next three years, with the advent of 3G and all. What if that assumption doesn't hold through? So what I'm trying to say is, and second thing is, the exit options, what does the VC normally look for? Basically, will I get three years to at least undisturbed where I can work and, you know, get the market? Or will I be under a constant check every two months, status, status, something like that? Or, Right, so two parts to it and very important question. I think all of you should just think about it carefully. When you look at your financial <clears throat> uh, analysis of, of, your, of your idea, right, and, and maybe you have some sketchy model around it. Finally, there are, there are handful of key assumptions that drive finally an IRR or return on investment uh, that you will get, you know, over a certain stipulated period of time, okay? You have to be sharp saying, look, I have a model, maybe I can show you later on, but look, my project, uh, you know, it has three or four critical assumptions which underpins the whole business plan, right? A, B, C, all right? If I get this even 80% right, okay, my project is going to deliver this kind of top line, this kind of EBITDA margin, and over a three to five year period, this kind of ROI or IRR, okay? And ideally, I mean, look, when you are selling a business, you, you are creating great value, right? For, for yourself and for, for your investor. You say, look, I mean, honestly, I don't believe you guys should look at an exit in three years where you will make a lot of money if you stay with me. But in the event, if you want to exit in five years, well, I do believe this is something which I can definitely deliver. Look, this is, this is, this is my view. Right? Exit is important because investors are in the business of, of you know, generating return on, on their investment so that they can, they can go and find some more budding entrepreneurs like yourself and invest in them. So you do need to kind of show them a path uh, through which they can, at least a certain return profile, through which they can exit at a certain stipulated period of time. But then, you know, as I always say, what's more important is how your business is going to scale up and what are those underlying assumptions. He's like a guy who knows his business. Whatever I asked him, I had two, three doubts and he able to answer them. What do you think would be the level of uh, depth an investor looks for the first time? Because like you said, the critical components also are the size of the opportunity and ability to execute. So when I have a limited amount of time and I want to only deliver what is, let's say, the most emphatic, what is the level of depth I'm looking at when I'm talking about uh, financials? So as I said, you have five points which I gave you right. that you must address in your right. pitch. Why you believe this is this is a great idea. How do you believe you can you can ride against competition? What is defensible about your idea? Point number two. Third, your execution capabilities, your confidence in, in your execution capability or the people who will work with you as a part of the, the team. Fourth, financials. Fifth, risk. So if I have 10 minutes with me, I would spend maybe three minutes on point number one, okay? Maybe a minute to two minutes on point number two. 
टू मिनट्स ऑन पॉइंट नंबर थ्री फोर मिनट्स ओके ऑन पॉइंट नंबर फोर एंड वन मिनट ऑन पॉइंट नंबर फाइव ही गेव सम वेरी गुड इनपुट्स I found his inputs very uh, good because it helped me uh, structure the whole presentation very quickly. So I found it a very uh, healthy experience for myself talking to Mr. Manish. As an investor, how much is it important to you to understand the execution strategy behind that and the operational strategy? There, there's you know because of course putting kind of revenue projections and costs in, in a vacuum. Doesn't necessarily mean anything unless you believe in the actual path to get there. I said, uh, look, all these five points are important for me very clearly. Uh, execution capability is extremely important, um, and and you know while in a 10-minute uh, time frame you can only talk about certain things, uh, I think it's it's in my view, uh, you know, you will need to give comfort to investors very clearly that you have either directly or through an extended team. ability to execute that project what's in your experience what's your typical uh, for a startup to turn from cash negative to cash positive what would you rate as a good benchmark i would say more than getting worried about cash please be worried about your own interest and motivation how do i give them a sort of valuation if i need a seed capital of say 30 lakhs as of today so do i use a 3 year projections to value and then use a comparable or 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 how how would that work what's more important is to get the business off the ground okay do not get caught up with valuation why i believe why I, i must be valued at, at you know 10 million dollars or whatever you know end of the day if your idea takes off the ground uh, everyone who's involved in it will benefit including obviously you okay what we do is we we look at future cash flows what your business can generate uh we obviously discount it because you know There's there's a real world view to to what you can achieve, what you cannot achieve, and uh, based on discounting, and we we apply a certain discounting rate, which which somewhere is a function of you know the riskiness of of this whole project. And typically, as you'll appreciate, all startup businesses have typically are treated in a higher risk uh, category. Okay, and we come up with a you know sort of a discounted cash flow view to what could be the range of of value that that we. can ascribe to your idea at this stage okay so there are ways to structure it in case there is a difference on valuation okay guys so maybe from my side as your sort of guide let me wish you all the best thank you so much thank you The interaction with Mr. Manish Segal was uh, very helpful because he sort of gave us a broad uh, guideline wherein what all aspects had to be covered. We had two hours to go back, look at our businesses, refresh our business plans, really uh, highlight the key aspects that they were looking for, and then present that to the judges. Today, I think was uh, in many ways a very tricky task. It was tricky in the sense that. Uh, we had so much to say because it was relevant to our businesses and we were given only 10 minutes to do our to it all in the strategy is to go through a brief description of what the company is and what the idea is and then as fast as possible move into the financials plan as such is very clear it's just about putting together the numbers and making sure that it makes sense to somebody who is looking at it for the first time so that's the aim right now We are preparing pitches on our specific businesses, and the challenge is that, of course, we will really have to defend why we want an investment and why our business is worthy, and how we will use the money and how we will show returns to an investor. Financials are critical. Uh, without numbers, earning or ultimately at the end of the day, cash is king. You have to have your numbers in order. So basically, I'm just working on the financial sheets and trying to see the P&L accounts and what sort of margins we have. So it's not at all easy, but definitely it is more interesting to me, and I think it's an opportunity for us. A difficult task because I mean, think about it. How much time does an external person get to know your business? It is actually a far more difficult task in reality than any of the other tasks. It's a task that's tougher than any other. Will their pitches add up or will they crack under the pressure?
And why should a bank deal with you at all? Can I have water? How do you guard against copyright violation? So to a certain extent, we depend on the legal system in this country to develop the kind of distributor relationships. So you haven't answered my question.